Hello, hello. Happy Thursday and happy Facebook Live time. Um, I am Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and you are watching an episode of Treehouse TV. Uh, I have some fun in store for you tonight, including some announcements. Uh, the winner of um, the hashtag from two weeks ago's uh, event and I have, uh, I, I'm going to give away the project I'm making today as well. So yay. <laughs> I see people joining in. Wonderful. Hello, Patricia. Good to see you here. Um, so today's project is actually a fun fold. Uh, super excited to share this one. Uh, one of my team members, Shelly Nichols, shared uh, a version of this with the, our team. And I had seen this kind of design for a while, but I'd never made one myself. So it's always fun to be introduced to something new. Hi, Robin. Hi, Terry. Nice to see people joining in. So, uh, so I'm super excited to share my version, slightly different. I mean, well, it's, it's the same layout, but some differences. So you'll see. You'll see what it is. I'll talk about it. Um, so I'm going to just dive right in with announcements. Hi, Linda. Good to see you here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so there's a handful of things going on today. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, the things that are going on. Looking at my notes. <laughs> there's new clearance rack items. There's a refresh. So there's new items on there up to 60% off. You definitely want to go check those out right away. Hey, Sally. Hey, Robin. Um, hi, Lynn. <laughs> um, just because those clearance rack items go away like really fast um, because they're so deeply discounted. So definitely check it out if you're a clearance rack sort of gal um, or guy. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Okay, well, there's a new uh, kit. Stampin' Up! is a new a kit from uh, the kits collection. It's called the Love Santa Tag Kit. And it's 12 oversized Christmas tags. So super easy to make. In my newsletter uh, yesterday, I linked to a video that um, Sarah Douglas, our CEO, uh, created showing you that kit and showing you how to make the, the um, tags, in fact. So it's a super, super cute, convenient kit for the holidays, of course. Uh, if you want some advanced prep, and how's a good time to, to get something like that? Hi, Sharon. Good to see you here. Uh, let's see. If I've missed anybody, I apologize. I'll catch up with you later. Hi, Anne Marie. It's so fun to have you here uh, again this week. <laughs> um, all right, so a couple other things going on. Um, my latest technique class, the sneak peeks are now out. So if you have, if you don't get my newsletter and you want to see those sneak peeks, go on over to um, melissascraftingtreehouse.com and click on the classes and events tab. And if you click on the technique classes available now option, I think it's three options down, you'll see sneak peeks there. And there are links to sign up for all the different options um, for this class. So there is gonna be a live online class on October 26th. It's a Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. But you don't have to join in for the live if you don't want to. You can always watch the replay. I stream my technique classes through Zoom and then um, and then stream them into a private take, uh, Facebook page, a group. So you can participate either on Zoom, show your face or not, <laughs> or you can watch in the Facebook group. So you have options, um, or you can watch the replay. And then after the event is all over, I do send a link to the video to everybody. So you can watch it whenever you want, however you want. Um, etc. So there are three different ways to sign up for the class. Um, one is just to do the live only, to come join me for that uh, live event, either Zoom or the replay or uh, on Facebook. And that's just $10. So all you get is the video, the participating and watching the video. Um, and I should tell you, <laughs> I should tell you the subject of the class. That would be helpful, right? The focus this um, month is sepia effects on cards. So um, I'm super excited about it. I love the three projects that I've created. The classes include three projects. If you get a kit in the mail, it's two each of three designs that you get the materials for. Um, and you get the materials for a quick reference technique page as well. So just so you know, that's what a kit includes. Um, there are no products in it, just the pre-cut and punched pieces. Uh, occasionally there's die cutting, etc. cetera. Um, so option one, again, the live only, which is $10. You can do the electronic bundle, which is 30. That includes the video and two PDFs, one for the projects and another PDF with detail, a detailed technique focused um, PDF with instructions, step-by-step -step photographs, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then you can get at the class with the kit and that is $40. So it includes all the electronic materials and you get a kit in the mail. So it's super easy to put together the cards. You can even craft with me um, if you want the day of the event. So that makes it really fun. I've gotten feedback from people that it, you know, it allows them to get started so much faster and join in if they do the kit. 
Um, so RSVP deadlines. For the kit, you have to RSVP by October 16th, uh, so I have enough time to cut and prepare and mail those to people. If you sign up for either of the two other options, you have until two days before the event, October 24th, to sign up for that. And again, there, are, there will be links in the description for this video, um, sneak peeks on my website, and so it'll be super easy to sign up as well. All right, what else? Okay, you guys, some of you know that we had the Makers Mojo Creative Escape this past weekend. It was amazing, chock full, and I was like way maxed at the end. I was exhausted. <laughs> And I bet you guys were too, but of course presenting, you know, added its own twist to it. Um, but it went really well. We had a few technical difficulties, but for the most part, it was great. Tons of amazing content. And you can still buy into that if you want. You can do the after the live option for the event. And again, I will include um, a link in the video description if you're interested in that. 10 presentations with videos, 10 tutorials, just tons of creative ideas, uh, multiple variations for um, during each presentation. People did an amazing job. Anne-Marie Heil, who's here with us today, uh, was one of our presenters and did an incredible job. So, and as did everybody, but I had to give sh a shout out to Anne-Marie because she's here. <laughs> Yay, Anne-Marie. All right, so there's that. And that's actually pretty much it for the announcement. So that's probably plenty. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now today's project, like I said, it's a fun fold and I'm gonna be using um, mostly the, um, what are they called? The intricate leaves dies with this fun fold. And I'm just gonna face the camera down and I'll show you the other products that I'm gonna be using. So I have to tell you guys that I spent some time in the last couple of days uh, working on trying to figure out how to stream, um, it's called StreamYard, to, uh, <laughs> to make this sort of a little bit more seamless instead of having to do that flip thing. Well, and then I, as I looked into it, I was trying to set it up and I can't do it in an event. So now I started doing Facebook events and I can't do it in an event without, you know, the paid version. So, oh well, so much for learning that. <laughs> I'm going to have to look for another option. All right, anyway, so here we are, still doing my regular old flip. So the hashtag for, night, for tonight is hashtag diagonal fun fold, okay? Hard and a bit of a mouthful, but uh, that's what you're going to use if you would like to uh, be entered into a drawing for the card I'm making today. So I'll show you what I'm using, and then I'll show you the card. So we're using, um, we're actually not using the set, but we're using the dies that coordinate with it. I like to keep the dies right in the set, so there are the dies. I'm using almost every single one of the pieces in this. So super fun. I love the dyes, anything leaves, I love. And then we're using a sentiment from Pretty Pumpkins, the So Thankful For You. So those are the main products we're using. And I'm sure you wanna see the project. So here we go, let's put this up here. So this is, I'm calling it a diagonal fun fold, as you can see there. And it opens like that, so it's actually a really relatively simple fun fold, but there are um, some tips and tricks for how to make it easier. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. And I'm also using the Pattern Party Designer Series paper, which is the Hostess paper. I've used it on a number of things. It's a great paper, has wonderful black and white patterns. So we're d that's gonna be a lot of fun on this card today. So there's the card. Um, remember the hashtag, Diagonal Fun Fold, if you want to receive the one I'm gonna make in the mail. Okay, so um, let's start with a template. So I've got my, um, what is this called? Simply Scored. And I'm using just a scrap piece of paper because um, I like to sort of create a template um, to have on hand so it's easy for me to remember how to do things in the future. So this is nine by eight and a half this way. And I'm just gonna start by scoring it at three inches. Now, um, in my blog post, you will see that there is a diagram that shows um, the scoring and the dimensions, etc. Now, you'll notice on the sides, I have it measured off to two and a half inches on the left and two and a half inches on the right. Now, you don't have to be as sort of, shall we say, scientific about it as that if you don't want to, but... I wanted to be able to get two of these cards out of one card base. So I was uh, trying to, you know, to try to maximize my card stock. The ones that I have seen typically in the, in the past, um, 
use pretty much a whole piece of cardstock for one card, and it's just bigger. Now, bigger is nice. Um, I definitely like the bigger, uh, but you know, I, I'm also uh, a little bit frugal, I guess, and I just don't like to waste. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've marked off my two and a half inch spot on the two uh, you know, diagonal sides, I guess you would say. And I'm just gonna put it into my cutter. Of course, I'm using my guillotine cutter. This is my favorite one. And I am just going to line up, and it's, I know it's gonna be hard to see here, but my um, two and a half inch mark that's right here, and then I'm gonna line up the bottom pencil mark now. Let's see if I can move this up and you can see. So you can see down here, I'm lining up the pencil mark at the bottom and the pencil mark at the top. This is gonna be basically cutting this piece of cardstock, my scrap paper, my template, in half, right, like that. And this can be one card and this can be the other. So um, I thought it was pretty nifty to be able to get two out of one. So for my card, I have cut a piece of basic black cardstock for my base. And as is probably obvious at this point, I, uh, my original card was the top half, right? And my, the bottom half is gonna be the card we're gonna make today. So I get two cards out of the one, right? There you go. Easy peasy. <laughs> all right, so now I've got my card base, I'm all set. I'm actually gonna set that aside. Now I've measured some designer paper pieces that measure, um, uh, actually, this, the width is pretty, let's see, what did I say it was? Two and, no, what was it? Two and 13 sixteenths. I know, it's a little bit particular. I like a very precise edge. So it's two and 13 sixteenths because that'll give me the edge that I want on the left and right on all three of these panels. This piece is six inches tall. This one's five and this one's four. It's a little bit more than I might need, but I just want to make sure that I don't have too little, right? And then I'm also going to need a piece of white cardstock because I'm actually going to have four panels that have either designer paper or something on them. Okay, so um, I have already colored this. This started as black and white, okay? Backside is yellow, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, and then I have a white one that I have already cut. Now, let me show you how I did my little, my cutting. So now I'm gonna have this piece on, um, it's gonna be on this side, so it's gonna show on the front. So I'm gonna want about an eighth inch, actually technically 3 16 of an inch on the bottom. <laughs> 3 16 yeah. Or maybe, oh, I don't know, I, have that. I, don't, I don't think I have that right, but anyway, a thin bottom. And I essentially need twice that amount because I'm gonna need it at the top as well, okay? So stay with me on this. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna turn it over, and you can see I've already drawn a pencil mark. So I've drawn a pencil line, and this is size, so of course I have enough room down here to account for the bottom and the top. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that off in just a second. And then I did the same thing, of course, with this one and with this one, so this one, Again, I'm putting it on the front side so that it's in the position, facing up the way it will be when it's assembled, turning it over, and then doing my pencil line. I think it's easy to kind of get this um, kind of confused or mixed up um, if you're not thinking clearly. Okay, now if you have done one already, like I've done this white one, this is actually gonna be on this panel here. It's gonna end up sneaking in behind, you see? So let's show you the original card. So when it's uh, open, the white is on the inside and this one becomes hidden. That's part of the, the mental exercise of doing this, right? So I've got my white one, that's gonna be on the inside and my this pattern here is gonna be on the back side, okay? It's gonna show up like that. So what I'm gonna do, because I know that this white piece is exactly the right size, is I've got my designer paper facing the way it's supposed to be and then I'm gonna take the white one and do a little nifty trick. Just draw my pencil mark with that, okay? And then I know it's gonna be facing the right way and, you know, just another way to get at what I need to do. 
All right, now I need my cutter again. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna line up the line on the back side on my cutter to trim it off. I'm not looking at comments at all. Does anybody have any questions? Is this all making sense? I hope. Okay, so I got that piece trimmed off. Pencil mark on this one. And I would recommend if you're estimating, like I was, how much space you need, uh, estimate to remove less cardstock or less designer paper than you think by a little bit because you can always cut off more, but you know, you can't add any back. So, and as you can see here, I'm ending up cutting off, you know, a little bit more than where my pencil mark is too. So, it's best to be conservative with where you put that pencil mark. Just a guide, right? Okay, so let's just make sure this all lines up the way it's supposed to be. I'm gonna have this one on the back side. This one's gonna go here, and then my white one's here. Okay, good, I think I did it right. <laughs> it's like one of those measure twice, cut one thing, cut once things, right? Okay, so now let's do some coloring, because this one's already colored. I'm going to do my middle one in my Cajun Craze ink, and I've got my, my uh, blending brush here. And I'm just gonna go in and add some lovely color to this piece. And I love this pattern. Such a pretty pattern. I didn't use this one, of course, on the first uh, card, so wanted to mix things up just to keep it interesting. For me and you guys which was a great tip I'm glad I, I gave you a great tip I wasn't watching to know when I was saying it <laughs> when you said it relative to what I said so you can make this uniform or if you want you can leave a little bit of kind of light space in the center kind of up to you or you could even do an ombre, like dark at the bottom and light at the top, or you know, whatever, whatever strikes your fancy. Isn't that cool? I like that. <laughs> Looks fun. All right, so next up, we're gonna grab the Evening Evergreen. So my color scheme is the Evening Evergreen, Cajun Craze, and this color is just jade. So for this one, I'm gonna grab my blending brush, my dark green, and Evening Evergreen. I think someone's answering a question for me on there and I can't see most of it. So thank you for whoever's answering a question for me. <laughs> um, yeah, left leaving twice the space to cut. Yes, okay, good. I'm glad that was a good tip. All right, so um, I got my Evening Evergreen, my blending brush, and I'm just gonna color this one. You may have noticed that on my first one, I did the leaves in the um, Cajun Craze. So again, just kind of mixing this up a little bit. Bring in some different patterns, different combinations. You know, you could also individually color these leaves if you wanted to, you know, do something real fancy and more time consuming. But using these blending brushes is just like so awesome for getting the color on there. And I like a bit of highs and lows, right? So some spots have the dark evening evergreen and some are a little bit lighter. So just keeps it interesting. All right, we're done with our inks. And we're done with that for now. <laughs> I actually meant to bring in another piece of paper to keep my space clean and I forgot. But lo and behold, I have another piece of cardstock or paper rather. All right, so let's attach a few things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my white glue, multi-purpose liquid glue. That one came out a little bit too much. See in there, that's a lot of glue. So I'm gonna actually take a little bit off 
put some on my green piece. Let's just move it around. <laughs> I'm going to kiss them. They're going to be kissing these pieces. Spread the glue around. Just make sure I don't get it on something else. Okay. And on we go. This gives me that nice wiggle room. Oh, isn't that so pretty? With the evening evergreen and those leaves. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love it. Hi, Shelly. Good to have you here. Just happened to look up right at that moment. All right, so this one probably needs a little bit more glue. This one seems to be flowing very freely, so I'm going to be try to be conservative about my pressing on there. Okay. Doesn't want to slide. Dried a little bit already. Okay. Panel number two. All right, and panel number three, we're actually going to stamp on this one, but it is directional, right? So I'm just going to attach it because it's not like I can turn it over if I goof up on my stamping. So we're just going to go with it. go and then we just have the back panel so go ahead and put some glue on that one hi Debbie good to see you here hi Charlotte nice to see people joining in and saying hello okay there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love that. I love coloring black and white paper. If you guys haven't yet gotten the Pattern Party Hostess Paper, that's what I'm using here today. Uh, there are just so many great patterns and it's a very robust pack. It's large. It has, I think it's, is it 24 pieces? I think so. I think it's a double size um, of what most of the paper packs are. Pretty, right? Okay, so you guys can compare just so far. I wanted to keep the um, the different color in the center, um, but I switched up. This is just jade color, and this one was colored with evening evergreen, and this is the uh, just jade and evening evergreen. So there's that so far. All right. So next, I'm going to assemble my little embellishments, and I've gotten given myself a little head start because these types of things tend to take uh, quite a while if you're uh, starting completely from scratch. So I put a little bit of adhesive on some of these pieces so it would make it easier to assemble. So I've got a glue dot on the back of that one and just gonna line it up, put it in there. And then this one's gonna go right on the front. And, you know, it can be a little bit different each time, right? It doesn't have to be exactly the same. This piece right here, love this cute little stem. I have a glue dot on the back side. Let's see if my light, get my light in place. Better see. So that I can turn it over. And uh, it's, well, it's actually on the front side is what I meant. I had it turned over with the glue dot on the front side so that I can just go ahead and pop it in here. And let's get my sizing a little bit so I know that it's not gonna be too long. That looks about right. And then I've created a little bow. Now I'm gonna create a bow on the other one as well. So let's do that one and then we'll go from there. Okay. So I'm bringing in this scratch paper that's um, dirty here. So to begin to make my other embellishment, I'm going to do some ribbon. And I did this, I did the ribbon over here, the little bow, in the same way as I'm going to do here, just with a different color. So this one's going to be the Just Jade, and 
I'm using the crinkled seam binding, my favorite, favorite, favorite um, ribbon to color. It's, and it's really like my favorite ribbon because it's so versatile and it's easy to work with, uh, really supple, easy to tie a bow with. And look at this, I can color it and make it any color I want. I just love it. And you don't even have to color both sides, although you can if you want to. It um, absorbs the ink so well, and it kind of goes through to the other side. It'll, it'll be darker if you do, um, but it's really subtle, right? You can also use the markers and do like an ombre. Like I've just used the dark, just jade, but if I wanted to, I could um, have used the light and the dark and made the ribbon ombre. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, this is already dried because it's uh, alcohol ink, which I just love. It gets a little stiff when it's dry, but no problem. It's still gonna be easy to tie. So I'm just gonna make my little, my little ears, wrap one ear into the other and make my little tie. And then who's gonna guess what I'm gonna do next? You guys know, those of you that know me. I'm going to do my what trick? What's my trick? <laughs> Give you guys a second. Anybody wanna say it? I guess there, there's a delay, so um, I know you guys know the answer. It's my pencil trick. My pencil trick with my bows. If you haven't seen this, this is like one of my favorite tricks. Ah, yes, pencil hands. You got it, Kimmy, Sally. <laughs> Those of you that watch me, that know me, you know my little tricks, the, my go-tos. Come back to them again and again because they're just so handy. I know a lot of people use a, a bow maker. You know, everybody's got to do what works for them. Uh, for me, I just feel like the bows aren't as pretty when I do it on the bow maker as when I do it myself. And you know, I'm pretty good at making bows, so I guess I have that luxury. So there's my adorable little bow. And I'm just gonna trim off, and you can see my ears are like, how can they be more perfect, right? Oh, Wendy, you know my trick too, Elizabeth? Yes. <laughs> I should have done a hashtag pencils. Pencil trick. And let's see, we're gonna just trim off that excess. I get it at a little angle there. All right, so now I got both of my bows done. So now you know what I'm doing on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and Attach this together. I am going to use a glue dot to attach my bow. I'm going to roll it up into a little ball so it's hidden in behind my um, the knot of my bow, which is actually really small, right? Because it's a the ribbon ties up so tightly that um, there's not a lot of space for it to sit on there. So you really do have to roll it up. And then I can use my paper piercing tool to place it even. And I'm just gonna place it right there. There we go. So embellishment number one is done. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some more dimensionals on the back side to attach it. And I like to straddle some of those pieces just to help them stay together as long as it's still hidden in there. It's a little close, eh, it's okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on the bottom panel of my card. Right in there. Okay, let's work on the second embellishment. Just gonna go on the top, giving myself a little head start on this one as well. And for this one, I've got a dimensional on the right there. And the backing's already removed, so I'm just gonna attach it so it overlaps on my Cajun Craze leaf. And then I have my, this lovely little stem. I used one of these little stems in all three colors. And I've got a glue dot and the only spot that I could squeeze it in there, you see it on there? Right in there. <laughs> and that's gonna go right in the middle on the front. 
slightly justified to the right. Let's see if I, where is the glue dot on there? I lost it, oh, it's up at the top. Now I rolled up that glue dot not only because, um, not only because it only fits behind if it's rolled up, but also it gives me a little bit of, a little bit of height, shall we say, a little bit of dimension to that one branch. All right, so now I've got some other little pieces. That's got an itty bitty glue dot squished up on the back of it. That's gonna go right in there. We've got an evening evergreen one. Now this, this is tricky, right? Too small for a glue dot. I took some white glue, I don't know if you can see the shine in there, and let it sit on there to dry. Did my white glue trick, my, um, so that it's, uh, it's not all oozy and wet, and I'm not trying to do that on camera, which is kind of a pain. So I did the same thing on this one. See how it's shiny on there? Put it on about, I don't know, 40 minutes ago, something like that, and um, just let it sit and dry. That one looks like it needs to be more towards the middle. And then I've got this last one. I've got a glue dot again right there at the, at the Y of the branch. And that one's gonna go in behind, up to the left. Now for this one, I'm gonna put more glue dots on the back side, only because it's on the inside and I don't really want it to be too popped up um, so that it doesn't prevent it from closing too well. I may put two layers of glue dots in some places, like here because it's um, sitting further out and this one's behind it. So, oh, you know what? There's one other thing that I like to do on these kinds of embellishments. And that is, I'm gonna grab my bone folder. Oh, I need another one. I need one down here so that it sticks down there and it's also gonna hold those little stems together right there. Okay, so this is the thing I like to do. Let's make these look a little bit more real. By using my bone folder, I'm just gonna gently kind of curl up the leaves just a little bit. Now these are delicate pieces, so I have to be really careful, especially with these branches. So I'm gonna be super careful. And I don't want them to stick out too much, but they just it just adds a little bit of dimension and makes them look a little bit more like a realistic leaf. Let's do another one over here, a little shaping. So there's my little shaped embellishment, and it's gonna get stuck right in here, and I'm gonna have it stick out the top just a bit. I want it to show when, I'm, when I got it tucked in there. Okay, and then last but not least, I've got my little just jade bow. And again, I'm gonna roll up my glue dot. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Sandy. <laughs> I love when I look up and see the word awesome. <laughs> how good does that, how good is that, right? Who can argue with that? All right, and then that's gonna go in here. I, I sort of justified that evening evergreen one up kind of high. It's like floating up there, but it's just gonna have to do. It's okay, a little organic element there. Okay, and last but not least, can't forget my sentiment. So thankful for you. Now is that, I just love that. Wonderful sentiment. And again, that's in the Pretty Pumpkin set. Um, there aren't any sentiments in the Gorgeous Leaves set, so I had to pull something from somewhere and it couldn't be more fitting. So I'm gonna grab my Jet Black Stays On, my favorite black. And I'm gonna go ahead and test it on a piece of scrap paper before I um, do it on my final thing because, you know, the label is not always straight on. It's not always as it looks. So I like to do bumpage. Am I bumping the table, Kimmy? Is that what you're saying? I saw you, I saw you said that a little bit earlier, something like that. I apologize if I'm doing that. So you can see it's a slight bit a kilter, you know, it's a little bit off. 
even when I think it's straight. So I do that and it just kind of gives me a gauge of how to stamp it. Um, my my um, stand for my phone isn't even on the same table that I'm working on, but it's close enough so I guess it just gets moves every once in a while. Oh, I'm glad I'm fine, Kimmy. <laughs> I don't really like to be moving my table when I'm when I'm doing this. I want it to be still, right? So, um, okay, so there we go. Isn't that fun? So fun. Now, I have this extra little piece, and I was thinking it might be fun there, although it probably would be better if it was the um, Cajun Craze color. Let's see if this one... I have another one from, from earlier. I think it might be too big, but anyway, I just thought this would be a, a fun idea or way to kind of decorate the inside. I think it'd have to be a little smaller, or maybe it has to face the same way. I don't know. I could probably trim it that way. But anyway, just an idea. So if you guys make your own, it's a way to kind of add a little bit, um, a little bit of that Cajun craze color to the inside. Tried to add it with the embellishments, um, but you know, a little more might be nice. So there are my two versions. If you want to see how they, they are all from the same piece of black cardstock. <laughs> just so you can see that part of it. But there are the two. Let's fold them up. And then, of course, the back side. So there we go. What do you think? <laughs> so just uh, want to ask you guys if this design looks at all familiar. I don't know how much you guys follow me or how closely, but um, this was actually... Um, the project that I did for the recent Color Fusers blog hop, the October color scheme, is this one, the, the Cajun Craze, Just Shade, and Evening Evergreen. And this project is actually on my website already. I published it on Monday. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera around and finish up that way. Let's see. So um, if you're looking for the dimensions and my graphic for um, the cutting and all that sort of thing, it's already on my website, so yay. So I will be actually taking this video and publishing it to YouTube and then putting it into that same very blog post. So it's almost all done. <laughs> so I'll be able to do that by tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, so all that information's there. So just a couple of quick reminders before I let you go. And I have to announce the winner. I just realized I forgot to do that. So last week's winner, the, the theme was uh, hashtag C-A-S wow, clean and simple wow. Um, and I have to go grab the card, hold on. So we did, um, we did several. But the person I'm going to mail this to, the winner, is going to get the fall uh, color scheme one. We did this with the art masking tape. If you tuned in two weeks uh, ago, um, I mentioned the art masking tape, and I just today responded to people's questions about where to find that art masking tape. So there were links there. Are, uh, I linked it in um, the video from two weeks ago. So go check it out if that's something you're interested in. So the person who is going to get this card... Drum roll, please. And I know who it is. I just, I can't remember in my head where it's written down. <laughs> oh, yes. It's, uh, and I don't know if she's here today, but it's MJ um, McLav McLavichick. I don't know if I'm saying that right. M-I-K-L-A-V-C-I-C. -I -C. Um, she's here often. Um, MJ is here, and hopefully she's here tonight to find out that she's the winner. Um, so, yay, MJ. <laughs> she's a regular. Um, and for tonight, I will be drawing a winner for the hashtag Diagonal Fun Fold, um, and I will announce it actually next week. Okay, so you're going, what, next week? <laughs> I've been doing Facebook Lives every other week, but I've decided that I'm going to do one next week because I have a Halloween project. I have the Simple Sweet Stampers tutorial bundle um, a project that I want to share. Halloween is right around the corner, so I don't want to um, miss that opportunity to share some Halloween stuff with you. Um, and I'm also trying to tweak my schedule because I'm going to be traveling to visit my mom in the beginning of November and I can't have a Facebook Live scheduled for that week because I will not have the setup to do it. I'll be uh, visiting her in Boston, leaving my husband at home. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, I'm going to be live next Thursday again with another project. So next week I will announce the winner of the hashtag Diagonal Fun Fold, so you'll get to find out then. 
Um, and let's see, just the, the quick recap, don't forget to check out the clearance rack. Um, check out that Love Santa tag kit that's now available. It is available only while supplies last, so don't you don't want to miss out if it's something you're interested in. Um, of course, my CPA technique class uh, that is on October 26th. Again, you don't have to be there for the live. You can just watch the replay if you want. I will link uh, all the sign up options in this video description and on YouTube as well if you're watching on YouTube or watching the replay. And uh, also you can get the Maker's Mojo after the live option. And right now, because the event has already happened, it's like pretty much an instant download, if you will. So you pay, you'll get an email. It'll have the links to all the videos and um, the PDFs in there. The only thing you don't get by doing the after live is the bingo and the prizes and the fun of being live and all that sort of stuff. But you're gonna, you'll get all the 10 videos and PDFs. So um, yeah, so yay. So I will be back next uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for another live featuring a project with the cute Halloween. Um, and the, this video will go live on YouTube uh, tomorrow. So I think that wraps it up for me. Um, hi, Wendy from UK. I love it that you're here with me. I know it's late for you. <laughs> I love it that you join us late. Um, so. I think that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep my Facebook lives just a little bit shorter. Um, oh, thank you, Shelly. Shelly says the Maker's Mojo is so worth the money. <laughs> I think so. It's a ton of content, uh, great value. And uh, like I said, each presentation is not just one card. We always show multiple variations. So um, that makes it extra fun. Cause it's, I'm sh we want to show you how to use what you have on hand. We're not like trying to get you to buy everything we're showing. <laughs> you might need to buy some of them, but not everything. So uh, anyway, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the project today and I will look forward to reading your comments too. All right, bye. Happy crafting, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. So glad you liked it. <laughs>